Lane Kiffin is about to dominate the transfer portal. Well, again. You are locked on Ole Miss. Your daily podcast on the Ole Miss Rebels. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Hi, I'm Stephen Willis, a former staff member at Ole Miss and a 10-year veteran member of the national media at Yahoo Sports. Today on the show, we talk about the top story this weekend, and that is the transfer portal opening up for what looks like it could be a really wild 15 days. The Rebels seem to be focusing at running back, but there are some other rumors out there as well. Tomorrow's Grove Bowl games um, – are happening essentially and Lane Kiffin is, and his staff are busy trying to create buzz for that event and Ole Miss is going to get an official visit out of Jerome Miles at the end of April and outside of being a really good football player there's a tie to the 2024 team. Hello this is the Locked On Ole Miss podcast your daily podcast on the Ole Miss Rebels part of the Locked On Podcast Network your team every day we're free and available on all the podcast apps and on YouTube. Thanks for making Locked On Ole Miss your first listen every day, and a special hello to the everydayers that make the show what it is. Do you want to meet your favorite Grove Collective athlete? Maybe even Lane Kiffin? There's still time to join the Grove Collective so that after the spring game, that meeting can happen. Go to thegrovecollective.com and sign up. Don't forget to print out your information to prove that you're a Grove Collective member so they don't turn you away but go meet some Rebels. So the transfer portal is ready to open up, and I think this is really interesting over the next, I don't know, couple of weeks. Uh, the window is going to be open for 15 days. That's 15 days that Ole Miss has to survive. And if you don't think that Lane Kiffin isn't freaking out about possibly surviving those 15 days, this is a post from 24-7 Sports and specifically Josh Pate. And it's a quote from his show. And he's like, I'm not overstating this. This will be the wildest transfer portal win era that you've ever seen. And it's going to gut some of your teams. This was retweeted by Lane Kiffin. Look up in the top corner there. And this is what explains Ole Miss and what they did for spring football this year. This explains the Grove Bowl games. And it's not a situation I never like to operate from a position of weakness or out of a position of fear, um, which is doing spring practice and handling what's going on to avoid this 15-day period. That's kind of what it is to me. But because of that, there are going to be a lot of players that are apparently going into the transfer portal. And Ole Miss is going to be one of the few schools that are set up to benefit from this. And this era of all this chaos, this Wild West mentality, Ole Miss has handled it and navigated it pretty well. Whether it was just a one-time transfer thing or an every-time transfer thing, because you have a coach in Lane Kiffin that's an early adopter who is willing to try stuff, he is able to manage this better than other schools have. And you have a situation at Ole Miss why, when other schools that were normally blue bloods at the you know, in 2008, they're struggling in 2024 because they their mentality hasn't changed in regards to the transfer portal, in regards to NIL. And all of these things started stacking up. So by the time they realized they needed to take this stuff seriously, they had already been passed by several level programs. And Ole Miss being one of those. And Ole Miss is like tweaking at the very top level, playing 4D chess at the moment, while others are just trying to figure out the NIL base. The people I'd like to mention about that is like, everybody knows that Mississippi State has been struggling with NIL over the better part of the last four or five years since it started. They were a team that was perpetually stuck in 2008. That's the way football is played. That's what we understand. That's what we do. So when the change happened, when it was a seismic change, it became a have and haves nots situation. And this isn't like a, hey, you have money and you don't have money type situation. That's not what I'm talking about. This is about a mentality of people willing to embrace it and not being willing to embrace it because maybe they're not willing to embrace it because they think that Congress is going to regulate it or the NCAA is going to do something. It is not 
simply worth our time. And these other schools, you know, Ole Miss, SMU, um, Florida State's a big, big player in this market as well, has, has lifted up into elite status because they've embraced this. And this transfer portal window is shaping up to be really similar for Ole Miss football. Now, the position that we've heard the most about so far is the running back position. And Henry Parrish Jr., who was at Ole Miss, transferred to Miami, might be looking to come back, is a name that has been crystal balled to Ole Miss several places. And there's some familiarity. So if Henry Parrish is coming back, great. I talked about for months that Ole Miss needed a Henry Parrish type running back on this team. Well, who better than Henry Parrish to fill that need? The question remained, though, is Ole Miss going to be done at, with the running back position there? And it, it's more and more likely looking like that's not exactly the plan. Now, that might be the way it works out. I'm not saying that, but it might not be the plan. The plan appears to be really similar to what Ole Miss did with the quarterback room a year ago, to where you just overstuff it, the cream rises to the top, and you're better for it. Remember, I've talked about this for the better part of two years. One of the key tenets in Ole Miss's football program is competition. They want practice to be harder than the games. That's that's something I heard Ed Orgeron say to his team multiple times over the years when he was at Ole Miss. He wanted practice to be harder than the games. Now, it didn't really work out that way back then, but now it kind of is. You look at the players that Ole Miss brought in in the winter transfer portal, and you try to find holes on this team. And one of the holes that is going to pop up that everybody's ears are going to pop up on is with a thumper-type running back. Damian Martinez, the running back at Oregon State, would be somebody that would fill that bill. He has run for nearly 1,200 yards, 6.1 yard, yards per carry. We talked to Brian Smith in a video that's going to be released free on Sunday night um, about the three transfer portal backs that we've essentially mentioned over the last couple of weeks. He talks about what they bring, what they do. Um, what their skill set is. Brian really likes Henry Parrish, but he thinks that um, Martinez is potentially a better running back than even Quinshawn Judkins was at Ole Miss. Now, Damian Martinez walked away from Morgan State. He was slated to make a little over $400,000 this season, according to Pete Thamel. I don't know how he found out that information. Don't necessarily care. The fact of the matter is he did. But, so that tells me that it's going to cost close to seven figures to sign this player, especially with contender-type teams vying for him. The teams that are involved are the Miami Hurricanes, which, if you ask Brian Smith, they've got all kinds of money down there on Miami, and they have a hunger to win like nobody's business. Michigan State, who's coached by his former head coach and Jonathan Smith, it makes sense, Tennessee, which everybody knows about the Tennessee NIL collective and things like that. Ole Miss and Oklahoma. That is the five schools to watch out for with Damian um, Martinez. A really good running back at 232 pounds, can play every down, and has running ability that is special. This is a player that Ole Miss fans should probably keep an eye on to see what he does. Now, it's not guaranteed that he goes to Ole Miss, but Ole Miss is in it. And another running back that we need to talk about before we take a break is Dalen Hayden. D-A-L-L-A-N. Um, I'm, I'm going to think assume that is Dalen. He's running back that ran for about 550 yards at Ohio State as a true freshman. He redshirted as a sophomore, got in there this year. The Ohio State has completely changed the offense from the time that he gained 500 yards because that was um, the head coach at Tulsa's offense. He went on and took that job. They brought in somebody else. Um, it didn't necessarily work out. It didn't perform at that level. Dalen, Dalen Hayden basically redshirted. And he wanted out of that system. They brought in Chip Kelly. That's a 
different type running system than probably he is interested in. And he's also looking at Travion Henderson and Quinshawn Judkins sitting up there on the depth chart. So we'll see exactly how that looks, but Ole Miss is going to be at least in the game with that player. That's three running backs right there in the transfer portal to keep an eye on, and it hasn't even opened up yet. It's weird that it works like that, but that's just the way it works. We don't even know if anybody's officially in there as it is. Now, what we need to pay attention to is when um, Damian Martinez gets into the portal, how quickly he sets up the official visit to Ole Miss, what is the order of the official visits, thing like that. Um, Dalen Hayden, what is his official visit status? Henry Parrish as well. I, I mean, surely Henry's going to get a free weekend back to Oxford and look around at what's going on. Now, other rumors we've heard, and via our Discord server, my DMs or otherwise, is every now and then that Tyler Barron wants to come back to Ole Miss rumor pops up. Now, I don't know if that's going to happen. There's been nothing on social media saying anything about him going into the portal, but it's something I guess we need to monitor as we look for a defensive end. You know, that, that's something we need to look for, so we'll see exactly how that goes as well. This transfer portal weekend is the story. You're going to start hearing names of players that are going to be getting into the portal and getting ready to go. This is a 15-day window. It's going to be very compressed. And then you're going to have about 30 to 45 days of people visiting and signing with schools. But the good news is there's only a 15-day window of people getting in there, so we at least have an idea of what to look for. I'm pretty excited about that, and we'll see exactly how it goes. Thanks again for making Locked On Ole Miss your first listen of the day. The Grow Ball games are tomorrow, and other than that, we know that it will happen. We have no idea what it will look like. We'll talk about that in just a minute. Passion, drive, and patience, the formula for winning championships, is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. Superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more, whether into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has got you covered. And with over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay's guaranteed fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motor Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to make your car the MVP and bring home huge wins. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only, exclusions apply. eBay's guaranteed fit is only available to U.S. customers. Are you watching Fox Sports or ESPN on your TV all day? Have to turn down the volume with all that screaming and shouting? Make the switch to Locked On Sports today, a free 24-7 sports streaming channel programmed for you every single day to bring you the biggest stories without all of that shouting. Locked On Sports Today brings you can't-miss analysis, opinions, news, streaming 24-7 on YouTube or the free Amazon Fire TV channels app, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every single day. So the Grow Bowl games are tomorrow. And other than the fact that we know that they are having tomorrow and that the coaching staff is completely lighting up trying to create buzz to get people into the event, um, we don't know exactly what it's going to look like. They are in the process of, for lack of a better word, overselling at the moment. So we'll see exactly what it looks like. It has a chance to be okay as far as just an event. It doesn't sound like much of a spectator type event. Like for one of the examples that I have on that is they're going to let students bring alcohol in coolers into the stadium. If you're over the age of 21, that alcohol into the stadium is designed to get students into the game. How many students are going to show up? Is the North end zone still a problem like it is during the football season? I do not know, but they're going to try to make it happen. The seven on seven game, 
you will be able to tell passing. You'll be able to tell quarterbacks in that situation. You'll be able to look at processing. So there's going to be probably 10 shows over the next three months about quarterback processing that we got out of this seven-on-seven game because that exists. Seven-on-seven is a part of practice. Processing is a part of playing quarterback. And corners and wide receivers covering and catching the ball, I mean, it's non-contact, but you can tell exactly a little bit what they look like. Now, the offensive and defensive line, you're not going to be able to get much out of it. The running backs and the linebackers, you're probably not going to be able to get much out of it either. So we'll see how this looks. I am looking forward to seeing, for what it's worth, Austin Simmons throwing the football. Um, It's a situation to where yesterday they had a pseudo Grove Bowl where they did basically a scrimmage um, in the last practice of the year, and Austin Simmons threw a couple of touchdown passes. Looked pretty good. And, you know, in my DMs, they were saying, it's like, what happens when Jackson Dart wasn't there during spring? Um, the rumor is, like I said, it's just a rumor because you can't necessarily 100% check, um, count on Twitter rumors. Austin Simmons has performed pretty well and has a legit shot at that number two quarterback position going into the fall. Um, everybody raves about that young man. Now, a lot of that could be the fact that he plays two sports and he's just in the news and he's interesting and all of that stuff. But some of it, if you, if you watch him throw, if you've seen him throw a football, knows that this guy is talented. And we had this conversation whenever he decommitted to Florida and committed to Ole Miss. Um, he's a talented thrower of the football, and we've all seen what he can do with a baseball on the baseball field. But uh, per his father, essentially, um, after spring football ends, which I'm assuming is after Saturday, whenever he doesn't throw a football very often, it allows his arm strength to build up for throwing a baseball. So you could see a velocity uptick um, from him on the baseball diamond as we get closer to the SEC tournament, if that is a thing for the baseball team. So him throwing a football, I do want to see see what that looks like. I've seen highlights. I, I want to see what happens live. I want to see Walker Howard. You don't hear much about Walker Howard. You don't. And – I don't think that's a negative thing. I just think that it's not a shiny new toy type situation. He doesn't play two sports. Walker Howard was a five-star quarterback. He was a good quarterback in his own right. I think he has just as much chance to win the starting quarterback job in 2025 as Austin Simmons. I mean, I think it would be a 50-50 proposition at the moment, but that's the kind of stuff we'll be looking at in the game. Now, they're going to be doing fun stuff. They're going to be doing different things. It's one of those situations that everybody is not going to be able to do it. But over the last 20 years, as far as not, there's not many non-coaches that have watched more video of football than me. That, that person doesn't exist, I don't think. Um, so I will be able to see processing. I'll be able to check looking off and I'll be looking at some different stuff that maybe Joe fan, Joe regular person is not going to be able to see. Um, also, I want to see coverage that like Lewis Moore, Key Lawrence, Yam Banks, Trey Washington, Jaden Kennedy. There's a, there's a lot of safeties and slot corners that in a seven on seven environment um, has a chance to make plays, come to the forefront, get the attention where in a normal Grove Bowl type setting, you're not paying attention to these guys except whenever they get burnt or they make an interception. Well, in this situation, every single play, they're going to have to do something. I think there's a chance that they could make a little noise. Like I said, I, I'm everybody knows what I feel about this thing. I've tried to cover these Grove Bowl games from all perspectives. Um, from the perspective of the fan, fr from the perspective of recruiting, from the perspective of the team. Uh, I've tried to do all of that stuff. Um, like I said, I think it could work. And if it does work, it's here to stay, essentially. Um, but I, I don't like how 
short term it was. I think at the beginning of spring, personally, they should have just announced that this was going to be happening. It kind of feels like it got half happen, half haphazardly put together towards the end. Um, and in the week of, you're seeing a lot of announcements of what was going on. Um, I think they should have played that out over um, a couple of weeks, personally. Like I said, if it's going to be fine, it's going to be here to stay. We'll see exactly what it looks like. I'll watch a little bit of the 7-on-7. Seven seven. Um, the other events, I don't have much interest in. Um, and Brad Logan, who was scheduled to be on the postcast after the game, we have canceled that postcast. We, Brad Logan's going to come on on Tuesday, and we'll just talk about Ole Miss football and what he saw and things like that. But there's not really going to be a postcastable type event um, this weekend. So we'll see exactly how that goes. And like I said, it should be fun. It should be a fantastic recruiting week, and it potentially could be a good event if it's well attended. If it's not well attended, it, it'll just die on the vine, essentially. But if it is well attended, it has a chance to be juice fest on steroids. I've said that. So we'll see exactly what's going on. By the way, if you are in the Grove Collective, um, you can go to the Manning Center from 5.30 to 7 o'clock Saturday and meet your favorite Grove Collective athletes and Lane Kiffin. It's an hour and a half. It's a Meet the Rebels type event. This is the coolest part, in my opinion, of the Grove Ball Games. If you are not a member of the Grove Collective and want to meet Grove Collective athletes like Jackson Dart, J.J. Pegues, those guys, Lane Kiffin will be in there as well, there's still time to sign up. Go to thegrovecollective.com and sign up. It's $21 a month, um, and you can go in there, print out your credentials after it's all done, a receipt, take it with you to the game so that you can prove that you're a member because they're not going to have a computer to look it up, you know. They're, they're counting on you to bring your credentials, but you can have a Meet the Rebels type event that Ole Miss hasn't done since COVID, essentially. So this is a chance to make that happen. So heads up on that one. That's probably the coolest event of the weekend. Should be a lot of fun. Still more to come on Locked On Ole Miss, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Ole Miss is scheduled for, slated I should say, for an official visit from a player from Corner Canyon High School in Utah. Yep, that's Jackson Dart's hometown. We'll talk about that next. You know, Game Time is now an authorized ticket marketplace of Major League Baseball, which makes getting tickets even faster and easier. Prices on the Game Time app actually go down the closer it gets to the first pitch. And with killer last-minute deals and all-in prices, views from your seats and lowest prices guarantees, game time takes the guesswork out of buying MLB tickets. I'm going to the Detroit-Tampa Bay game, heck, a week from Monday or Tuesday. I forget which day it is. I'll look that up as it comes. But I use the game time app because they have some unique features that I can use. And one of those is the seat view where you can get a panoramic view of what it will look like at Tropicana Field, for example, from your seat. Because I wanted to see that sweet, sweet left-handed swing. It's one of my favorite things in the world. Game time allowed me to do that with those panoramic views. They also have ticket coverage in case you lose your job or, you know, the lowest price guarantee in case they drop the prices and there's a lower one there in the same section or row, they'll pay, credit you 110% of the difference. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code LOCKEDONCOLLEGE for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account, redeem code L-O-C-K-E-D-O-N-C-O-L-L-E-G-E for $20 off. Download the Game Time app today. Last-minute tickets, lowest price, guaranteed. Thanks for making Locked On Ole Miss your first listen of the day. And shout out to the everydayers. Locked On has launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube. And now it's available on the Amazon Fire TV app in the free Fire TV channels app. Locked On Sports Today is here for you 24-7, covering the top sports stories of the day with the local experts of Locked On, plus our national shows that cover each and every league. Find Locked On Sports Today, now available on the free Fire TV Channels app. Be part of history. All right, we are in official visit season officially after this spring game is over with tomorrow. 
and the last weekend of April, Ole Miss is slated to get a visit from Jerome Miles. Jerome Miles is a wide receiver, six foot three, hundred ninety pounds, nice size, um, out of West Jordan, Utah. That's Corner Canyon High School for those who want to know that. And Corner Canyon High School is where Jackson Dart went to school. So that's the connection. Um, he's rated as a four-star on 24-7 and ESPN. Um, 193rd player in the country on 247, 173 on ESPN. He's a three-star on, on three and rivals. Again, it's important that you know that because of who the all-star game leaders are, okay? In the Under Armour All-American game, ESPN, you want to be higher up on that because ESPN, all they do is get their rankings off of the Under Armour list. So you can tell exactly what the Under Armour people think about Jermaine, or Jerome Miles. Now let's look at the highlights of what's going on. We're talking about a really good wide receiver that the first thing you notice is when he's in the open field, he's gone, period. He does not get run down from behind. There's even a play on the highlights to where he catches a crossing pattern. And you think that, oh, yeah, they've got the angle. They'll get him. They'll get him. And all of a sudden, he gets to the sideline, cuts up, and he is absolutely gone. Corner Canyon and the quarterback, by the way, I can see a lot of Jackson Dart uh, in his game, the way he throws the football and things like that. But Jerome Miles is a really good wide receiver. Now, Jackson Dart did not play with him at Corner Canyon um, because he is, heck, I guess he would be a senior now, officially, if we were on the old system. And th I'm telling you, this COVID year messed me up. But this player came in. He's from there. And uh, the Darts are still, I imagine, still in that community. And everybody knows who Jackson Dart is. I think Jackson Dart has a chance to be the poster child of college football season this season i think it could be a situation where jackson dart is the face of fansville it's like him or shadur sanders it'll be one of those two and jackson dart has a chance to win a national title shadur sanders has a chance to go six and six it's it's one of those type deals so everybody knows who jackson dart is around corner canyon high school in south jordan utah so Jerome Miles would be absolutely understanding who Jackson Dart is and where he goes to school and his role on this 2024 Ole Miss football team. Now, he also, Jerome Miles also knows the wide receiver unit that Lane Kiffin put together at Alabama. That wide receiver unit that everybody remembers was it Henry Ruggs, Jerry Judy, Jalen Waddell, and Devontae Smith. Those guys all recruited by Lane Kiffin. And Lane Kiffin is going to put guys like that on the field for Ole Miss. He's recruiting them. We talk about every year about Lane Kiffin building up the talent level of the roster. And that is because he goes out and he tries to recruit over whatever talent he has. There's no such thing as good enough with this coach. And, you know, I have to look at myself in this situation as well, but you have to take the good with the bad when it comes with Lane Kiffin. There's some stuff that Lane Kiffin does that drives me absolutely nuts, and you've probably heard about them on this show. But there's also some things that he does that I'm absolutely thankful for, and those things, I have to keep those in mind when the other stuff happens. It, it just kind of is what it is. Anyway, thank you for making the Locked On Ole Miss podcast your first listen. We have the most perspective surrounding Ole Miss sports, and it's one of the many reasons that we're the number one Ole Miss podcast out there, and thank you for that. But for your second listen, go to Locked On Sports Today and see the first national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube. Locked On Sports Today is here for you 24-7, covering the top sports stories of the day with the local experts of Locked On, plus our national shows covering each and every single league. Find Locked On Sports today, now available on the free Fire TV channels app. And for those of you on YouTube, we'll send you there right now. Happy Grow Bowl weekend. Toddy toddy.